This is a demo of the overfill protection system for buck plants. I'm going to go through each wire and show you what it does. I uh, explain it very thoroughly so this might be a long video. Okay. So all the power comes from a cigarette lighter inside the truck. Right there. Everything is powered by a cigarette lighter. Okay. It only pulls about four amps to control the whole system okay As you can tell i have the cigarette lighter plugged up right here okay that goes to the cigarette lighter inside we have emergency stop here okay and you have the scully cord just like you would at a rack plug up here okay now this is a seven-way trailer adapter I really don't like the seven way at trailer adapters because uh, they get moisture inside of them and it really needs to be re engineered. So I might do away with that and do something differently. But this will connect right, right there, somewhere close to the pump, as you can tell. Okay. Now, this is the, it's the same seven seven way core that you see on a trailer. These actually you see the cam lock. These actually screw in; they lock. So I was trying to find a bigger one to replace that with, but that bigger one is easier for the gloves to handle than these these smaller ones. And this is a 12 pin connector right here that goes to the seven way. Okay. The red one's for the sensor, the blue one's for the seven way. Okay. The sensor. The sensor has the same type of connection, cam lock, except it's a three prong. This one's a 12 prong, that one's a seven prong. So you can't mess them up. You can't mix them up, okay? They can only go one way. So they're both locked in. You can see they're really sturdy. These connections. I love I love these connections. Now let's look at the sensor right quick. I've done some uh, modifications to it. This is a Teflon coating. Teflon, or not Teflon, it is uh, Tigon is real Tigon, which is crazy expensive to get. All right. So I have about 30 feet of cable here, just so I can reach what I'm doing, explain it to you better. But the rules apply. You can only use this for a uh, 20 feet, uh, 20 feet is the maximum. If you want to add more cable like I did, like I added right here, you can see what the wire loom is. It has to be outside the tank area so you cannot add anything inside the tank it has to be solid wire you can tell inside this tigon right here it's solid wire it's solid wire for 20 feet okay so you cannot have a breakup connection inside the tank it has to be solid wire all right so here's what we're going to do explain it to you first I still gotta hook up my hoses. <clears throat> so we have 1500 gallons of diesel in this one compartment, okay? We're gonna set the sensor up, and which is gonna be my next step, to pump 100 gallons of diesel, exactly 100 gallons of diesel into this other compartment. And it's gonna be just like my wireless video. I pump it one, from one compartment to the next, just as a demo, just so you can see that it works. This system is made to prevent an overfill of a tank, book plant. And just to be clear, this part, all this, all this, would stay at the book plant, okay? This, right here, would go on the truck, right here. So when your driver pulls up, it connects 
his pump automatically starts as soon as he connects. And once the sensor trips it, the red light comes on. There's a buzzer inside the, the box here. It stops the pump. Okay, you can set the sensor from 1% to 90%. I'm about to show you how to do that. Now, every tank has a tank chart, okay? If you don't have a tank chart, you can punch in dimensions online. They can give you inches per gallon for that specific tank. All right, you want to set the sensor. This is what they call a splash shield, this black part. Set it right above where you want to shut off at. So it needs to be even with that mark. So seven inches in this particular tank equals 100 gallons. So if I want to go to 90%, I would look up on the tank chart where I want to set the sensor at. Now, as you can tell, this is compartment one, the one I'll be pumping into. The sensor just hangs there, okay? It'll stop moving in a second, but it's weighted, and it just hangs. I set it up, depending on what, how many inches I wanted, and then I zip tie it to the dome lid. Now every tank will have different mount solutions. That's something that we're going to have to figure out in the future where exactly to mount it and how to mount it. But this is real easy and real simple. You could probably go through the vent or if you have a lid up here with flanges, a flange lid with 12 bolts, you could take the flange lid off and drill a hole and then put uh, what they call a uh, firewall a connector through firewall connector they use in cars you could do that too all right now i have all my valves open everything's open everything is ready to go those two are open over there so we're going to plug these two connectors together I got those two put together. Pump is going. Let's look at it over here. You can see I have some in that glass. The pump is stopped. Alarm went off. Okay, pump is stopped. The alarm went off and the fuel hit the sensor, okay? There's where the fuel hit the sensor and it stopped the pump, okay? Now I'm gonna move the sensor up a little bit and simulate an emergency stop. Pump is running again. Okay, we're gonna simulate an emergency stop. It just stopped the pump. Okay. Now, if you want to put the pump back on again, now I have the sensor set up so you can see I set up a little bit shorter last time. We're going to sit here and watch it. See, it stopped the pump at a certain level. Thank you for watching.